Okay, boys and girls, I want to take this opportunity to sort of follow on from the previous video I did about um, neutralizing um, excess contrast in Lightroom and sort of highlight and shadow recovery. And I know it, it really must sound like I'm banging on Lightroom, and I'm not, but oh god, there's certain bits of it that I find really frustrating. And the way Lightroom works is by doing automatic shadow and highlight recovery in your image. Now, back in the old days, you used to be able to see those recovery settings and remove them. But as you must now be aware, if you follow my YouTube channel, you can't see them anymore. And we've got this image of a, a, a barn owl sitting on a post and uh, it's a it's a bit of a contrived image you should be able to just make out jesse's and a, um, a doe ring on this bird's leg and uh, it was shot at a little bird of prey day that uh, myself and mark davis help out with for uh, one of the local camera clubs in stafford and uh, we shoot these tame birds of prey for the uh, members of the camera club well we help them shoot it we set the different poses up and uh, yeah a good day is had by all. The image that we were getting everybody to go for in your head is sort of visualized like this. So we're trying to go for a lot of detail in the in focus areas, but coming up with a very, very low key image, which in harsh direct sunlight you would think would be quite difficult to do but if you expose to the right and you get your highlights exposed as highlights and not as midtones as your camera wants to expose them you actually get that exposure of the highlights right it is quite easy to produce a good strong low-key image like this but of course you have to get Lightroom under control again and I'm going to do this in a slightly different way we're not going to adopt my usual process version swap we're going to work to tease the maximum amount of detail out of this raw file this raw file shot at a thousand ISO and it's on a Canon 5D Mark IV so I'm going to go over to the develop module and as I said I'm not going to do my normal process version swap. We're just going to work solely in the right-hand panels here in Lightroom. And um, the one thing I want to draw your attention to is the little clipping indicators for shadows and highlights. You'll notice mine have got a little white box around them. If I hit the J key, that little white box disappears and you'll notice that that blue clipping that was here has vanished as well. So, same for Mac and Windows machines. Hit the J key, and it automatically will show you where your highlights and shadows are clipping. If we go over to the Basics panel, we can see we're in the default Adobe Color. And if we come down to the Calibrations panel, we're in the current process version 4 we have first of all going to go and switch out to the process version of Lightroom which didn't actually tell you any lies which is process version 2010 or version 2 as they like to call it now and now you can see the amount of black clipping which is actually inside the image and I think I'm just going to switch back to version 4 a second to make you aware of one small thing. You can see we've got a little bit of shadow clip in there and we can get rid of it by taking the black slider and moving it to the right. And if we continue to move the black slider to the right you'll see that the blacks are getting lighter. If we move it to the left they go darker. So if we put that back to zero and then come back into process version 2010, if we now come back up to the basics panel, you can see the blacks slider value is at five. 
but if we move the black slider to the right you can see now everything gets darker yeah crazy or what so what we're going to do is take the black slider all the way to the left so it says zero because we've done the process version swap down to PV 2010 the profile is now changed to Adobe standard so I'm just going to switch that out to camera neutral I'm then going to come into the artificially boosted brightness and I'm going to turn that down to zero I'm going to come into the artificially boosted contrast and I'm going to turn that down to zero and you'll notice that the black clipping levels keep changing I'm now going to come into the tone curve and here's process version 4 and our current process versions idea of a linear tone curve it's not linear at all it's a medium contrast tone curve so we'll go and switch that out to linear now you can see we've got some black clipping here still and all I'm going to do is just grab the black end of the linear tone curve and I'm just going to lift it really difficult to do with a pen and tablet that is really and truly if I'd used a mouse I could have got that up to 0 0.4 and it would have done just exactly the same job it would have gotten rid of the black clipping so if we go back to the basics panel to check that we're still in camera neutral everything is zeroed so what we've done now is maximize the detail extraction and the tonal detail extraction the details contained within the intertonal contrast the micro contrast if you like contained within that image and we've teased it out so we've now got a really good starting point now we need to go and add some localized adjustments the only thing is if we add localized adjustments in a conventional manner inside of Lightroom virtually every adjustment we can make inside the Lightroom to this image will actually in some way or other increase the exposure beat on a global basis or a localized basis and we can't afford to increase the exposure of this image anywhere we can't because it's a thousand ISO it's on a short dynamic range and if we do anything much to the exposure we'll start to generate clipping so we don't want to be doing that we can't put a stops worth of exposure compensation in this image not in Lightroom because we'll start clipping our highlights so we're going to do it inside of Photoshop and so I suppose we'll go and right click on the image and we will go edit in Photoshop CC 2018 and here we go here's our image the first thing I'm going to do with this image inside of Photoshop is command or control keyboard shortcut command or control J and what that will do is duplicate the background layer to a new layer so now we've got two versions of the same image or two identical versions of the same image now for those of you who aren't familiar with working with layers you have to remember that it's as if we're looking at this layer stack from the top down because the pixels contained in this layer one are in the normal blend mode they do not blend at all with the pixels in the layer beneath these are the this background layer but if I change the blend mode to virtually any one of the settings down here the pixels in the layer one the top layer will actually become how can I put this it's like they become see-through they become transparent but they become transparent in different ways they become transparent in increased brightness decreased brightness increase saturation decrease saturation increase color decrease color increase contrast decrease contrast it's all very simple once you get your head around blending modes and of course 
we're using two things here so far that we can't do in Lightroom. We can't work in layers in Lightroom and we can't work in blending mode. So all in all, I'm going to switch this layer one into the screen blending mode. And now you can see we've actually bumped up the exposure. We've actually bumped it up by a little bit more than a stop. But if I sort of scroll across, we haven't built up any noise and we haven't generated any image clipping. Not that you can see image clipping, but if I go and refresh the actual histogram for the image, you can see we've got quite a decent gap over here between the brightest tones in the image and the actual end of the histogram where clipping would start to be generated. The only thing is that I do not want the image to look like this because I don't want to see these screen blended pixels on the brighter parts of the owl. So, how do I remove them? Now, we could sit there and use a mask and paint them out with a black brush, which is very reminiscent of the way you do adjustments in Lightroom with a brush or a radial graduated filter or a linear graduated filter. And yes, we can now sort of change or adjust the density, the pixel brightness or pixel color over which those adjustments might take place. But it's all very crude and it's a little bit hit and miss and it gets confusing for people. We have this ability inside of Photoshop to use pixel based masks which are created from the pixels contained within the image itself. And I could show you how to make luminosity masks but it's a it's it's an easy process but it's tedious and what I always recommend people do is use this plugin from Greg Benz it's called Lumenzia so what I'm going to do is in the description in the video below because I'm waffling um, in the description of the video below I'll give you a link to where you can go and buy this Lumenzia plugin um, it's really good value for money and there'll also be a link to where you can go and buy it bundled with Greg's training and you get a little bit of a discount and in all honesty and transparency if you click the links Greg gives me a quid or two yeah that's nice isn't it every little helps as they say at Tesco's so what I want to do is this is the default view for Lumenzi when you open it up what I want to do is to come into the preview and from the drop down menu select live M that means live masking and what I want to do is I want to hide this screen blended or these screen blended pixels from the owl and to do that I'm going to use a dark mask I'm going to use quite a dark one I'll go and select the D5 mask and the nice thing about doing it this way it shows it actually applies the mask to the layer and it shows you the effect of the mask straight away so you could actually go and change the mask on the fly if it wasn't giving you the desired effect so you can play around with these masks when you're in this live end view you can play around with them to your heart's content but I'm actually going to stick with a D5 mask for this one and uh, that's looking pretty good it'll do for now um, the actual mask itself I'm going to click on it and I'm going to bring the image up to a hundred percent and I'm going to turn this layer on and off so you can see the difference it's making it's 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 reducing the contrast between the owl and the background which is quite nice because I don't want it super super black and it's also emphasizing or throwing a little bit more light into the eye without actually dialing the exposure up and that's the thing if you do that use the screen blend mode in Photoshop it's like dialing the exposure up but without any of the penalties that you would get for doing so inside the Lightroom but if I actually out click on the mask you can see that I've got some gray areas inside of the eye 
and I'm just going to hit the B key and painting with white I'm just going to reduce some of those grey areas inside the eye so I can see the effect just that little bit more so I've removed the grey from the eye or the majority of it I'll hit the forward slash key to come back to our image and so now you can clearly see the advantage of this adjustment on the actual level of detail and the lightness and brightness of that detail inside the barn owl space anyway we'll come out to a, a smaller view so we can see what we're doing now the next thing I want to do is to just start to add a little bit of definition in certain areas in the brighter areas of the owl because you, you have to do things in small incremental steps if you want to get really good with producing high quality images everything's done in subtle incremental steps I'm going to just come down to this little levels icon and I'm going to click and activate it and you can see we've now introduced automatically a levels adjustment layer and don't forget this is a non-destructive adjustment layer and all I'm going to do is now apply a light mask because the only thing I want to be selected are the actual light tones themselves so now we can see the mask here we'll out click on it so you can see there's the mask I actually think that's a little bit too uh, bright so I'm going to click on L2 instead that's a little bit better and now what I'm going to do is click over here onto the actual levels adjustment itself and I'm going to grab the white point slider for the levels and I'm going to move it sort of down to around about where this really big peak is here in the histogram and just to be super picky because this is a luminosity only adjustment I'm going to switch it from the normal blend mode to the luminosity blend mode and if we shut Lumenzia down and we turn those two layers off there's the image as it left Lightroom and here's the two very quick adjustments that we've done to it inside of Photoshop both using Lumenzia both using layers and both using layer masks so all in all there is no way on God's green earth we could produce this image inside of Lightroom no way you could come close as you saw before but then the localized adjustments would end up being done in a less than ideal way because we can't gain access to blend modes and layers inside the Lightroom so all I'm going to do is save the image and then we'll switch over to Lightroom like so and here is our image done out of Photoshop now what I'm going to do is use some of Lightroom's really useful tweaking adjustments and one of the nice ones is clarity you have to use it quite sparingly but if I turn the clarity up and you can see I've, I've dialed it up to 40 it's way too much but it's added a lot of definition in here too much really and it's also because it's a global adjustment it's gone and applied itself all across the image so I want it to be targeted I'm going to target it very simply by using an adjustment brush and we'll start with a value of 19 on clarity everything else is set to zero we won't bother with auto masking and I'll just come in and paint 19 clarity just where I want it to be and nowhere else and basically all I'm trying to do is get it round the head yeah and that will do for me if you're wondering why it all looks a little bit fuzzy around the bottom we actually shot this image through a little tiny gap probably about five inches across a little tiny five inch gap in a gigantic gauze bush so there was quite a bit of gauze actually directly in front of the lens hood on the uh, 500 mil and of course that just makes this foreground mush 
which I know a lot of uh, camera club judges don't like, but well, there you go. That's uh, neither here nor there. So I'm just going to click done on that. I might just go and warm the image up a couple of points. Mm, maybe like that. I think that looks quite nice. And I'm going to apply a vignette to this image. Not that it really needs it, but it will make a little bit of a difference. So we'll come down into the effects panel and we'll just use highlight priority and we'll turn it down. And of course, you can see now, because I've got my clipping indicators on, you can see where the vignette is making the image too black. And if I went to do a big print off this image, I would be running into all sorts of trouble. So we can sort of dial that back to the upper 40s. And uh, yeah, there's our image. And here's the raw file that we started off with, when it'll activate, come on, there we go. And if we reset the image, that's our starting image, and that's what we've ended up with. Now I realise this image might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's certainly mine, and it met the, it certainly meets up with the visual expectation of the shot that I had before I actually pressed the shutter button. Okay, so there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Um, you might want to consider clicking the subscribe button and as I said if you are interested if you've had your interest piqued about Lumenzia then um, if you just look in the description below I'll put a couple of links in there um, where you can uh, actually go and purchase it from Greg Benzie's little boutique on the interweb and uh, a grand time will be had by all so anyway as I said before hope you've enjoyed that folks Hope you found it useful, and until the next time, TTFN, bye for now. I usually end up with two roo, don't I? Yeah, TTFN, bye for now. I don't look like Jimmy Young.